Hi, this is Shira Rubinoff. I'm here with Grady Summers, EVP product at SailPoint. Grady, pleasure to be with you here today. Hey, Shira, great to be here. Thanks. Welcome. So, Grady, we talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning, and I'm wondering why are artificial intelligence, machine learning, and automation becoming increasingly critical for cybersecurity operations, specifically in terms of identity? Yeah, it's a question that we get asked all the time, as you can imagine, uh, you know, by our customers. Uh, how can we apply AI, machine learning, to have a, a better security program? And I think what's interesting is, you know, we've seen AI applied to things like malware detection now for several years, right? Um, but what we're now finding is just like the crushing weight of manual work is really starting to, to weigh on security teams, right? And so what they're asking us for is, hey, can we apply AI to make decisions on behalf of humans, which is sort of the fundamental what we think about AI right? It's, it's the artificial intelligence. And so, um, you know, in our world and identity, uh, boy, people have to uh, request access to things, need to get access approved to various systems. And, um, you know, the, that needs to be certified on a regular basis. And this was a relatively simple job 20 years ago, maybe even 10 years ago. But now you're approving, you know, internet and there's bots and there's machine identities and it's, it's sort of exploded, right? Sure. Um, and so, yeah, our customers are saying, hey, can we help ease some of this administrative burden and, and let the AI kick in to start making decisions? Certainly. And I'm sure we have to think about the diversity a piece of artificial intelligence. Who's inputting? What are the backgrounds are? How are we thinking about all the information that we need to input in order to have proper results? Yeah. And, you know, along with that, too, is you're right. There's how, how, what are we inputting? What's in the algorithm? But yeah. we're finding our customers are really asking us to make the algorithms transparent, too. And that's, as nice. you know, a big, big deal now in, in AI. Um, because our customers in many cases are being audited and the auditor comes in and says, well, who approved this access and who recertified this access? And you can't just say, well, the machine did it. Mm -hmm. So, we, you know, we have to be able to show, we have to log it. We have to show what the inputs were, as you were just um, pointing out, um, why we made that decision, sort of what the score was on the output. So I think it's a really good thing. Um, I don't think it's, I don't think any of us want to rely on AI that's a black box. Um, yes. So it's, I, we're providing a lot more of that transparency now. Certainly. And so beyond entry-level threats, as AI and machine learning are applied to broader sets of more complex cases, how are their value in the field of cybersecurity evolve? Well, yeah, so as you mentioned, um, going way beyond sort of the, the simple stuff, and, and not that, you know, things that we've been applying, AI uh, for, for malware detection, certainly not simple, but it's... Um, you, you use the words entry level, it's, it's similar, relatively, it's easier to understand, right? Okay, yeah. is this thing good or is this thing bad? Um, similarly, we're applying AI in the identity world to relatively simple things like um, a recommendation as to whether or not to approve access. Um, but where we're seeing it evolve now is much more complex things that I think only an AI can do well, which is, uh, hey, we see um, based on access patterns and, and roles in the organization, you could create a new role and that role uh, might be for a you know bank teller based in Atlanta and grant them this set of access. And if you do that, you can make your program so much more secure. You can reduce the number of access requests that somebody has to make, you know, going asking for one app at a time. They get it all day one, so they're more productive. And so I guess my point is we just see this uh, continued evolution from relatively simple cases um, to much more complex things that a human really could not do, but fundamentally make the security program so much better. Certainly. So aside from these technologies, organizations can quickly recover from a cyber attack. They're also backed by agile teams that can problem solve. And we talk about the human factors piece, the cyber hygiene within an organization, how to really give the employees and give the people the power to be their best cyber defense. So how do you talk about building a culture where people are your best defense, thinking about the proper cyber culture within the organization, as well as cyber hygiene across the entire organization? It's an interesting question. I can tell you, I was um, a CISO at a large organization, you know, more than a decade ago, um, of the security team at SailPoint now, and this has been a constant, right, is how do you get that right security culture? And, you know, it kind of goes without saying, but the first thing is making sure that, um, you know, the, the, the people in an organization are educated, um, but the people understand the sort of what they, the access they bring to the table, and especially in our world of identity, um, you know, in every cyber attack, the target is, the identity the target is a person behind that identity or who owns that identity. And so we always try to make sure people understand that. Um, I also love, you know, maybe a little more tactically, I love humans um, in the organization as detection mechanism. I do love yeah. humans in general, but I also like when they're, they're detected. It's good you like humans. That's a good thing. 
Yeah, and what I mean by that is it's neat when we see a person in the organization report a potential security threat. Maybe it's a, a phishing email they got, or um, maybe it's um, you know they, they hit a website, they did something, you know, they saw something download on their computer, and they call to report it. So I love that when when you know a, a person can become an intrusion detection system because they're educated, they're motivated, they know they're 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 the victim. They didn't do anything wrong by clicking on that phishing email per se. They were tricked by a criminal, and so I like when when people feel. Like they've got the prerogative to come report that stuff. You know, you're doing a few things, right? I think that's an important point you're saying. You know, people always talk about the human being the weakest link in the chain. And what you're saying and what we've all said, the right cyber professionals is make them part of the solution. Give them the power to do it. Let them come forward. And it should be something they want to hear, not disruptive, but more to be helpful within the organization to, to strengthen it. And my guess is, I know you talk to so many uh, people across the industry and the orgs that do this best, I'm sure, no surprise, have the better security programs and tend to be more secure, right? Correct. Correct. And you're right. It's the people, the process and the technology and the process in the middle is the glue. If we don't tighten up on that and give them the access what they need in order to be able to communicate and tighten up, that's going to be a problem for organizations. So I love what you're highlighting. Well, it's interesting too, you uh, talking about the people process and technology. And I think uh, kind of bring it full circle, you started out by asking about AI and we talked about the importance of people. And I think as a security vendor, uh, traditionally vendors have provided the tech, but you had the people in the tech and, and you know the org had to weave the process together themselves. I think one thing AI is doing is like bringing that together so that you're not, uh, you're helping people make more informed decisions. You're actually making the process better versus just throwing tech at the problem. And I think that's that's a big change and for the better. So we kind of came came full circle without even realizing it, but, but I like the way you put that there at the end. Thank you, very well said. And what a pleasure talking to you today. It was great talking with you as well. Thanks, Shira. Thank you.